Hey everybody, welcome to another uh, investigator guide for new players. Today we're going to be talking about Jacqueline Fine, the psychic. Uh, her big thing is that she gets to reveal more tokens every time, uh, well not every time, only once per round when she <laughs> grabs tokens from the, the cup. Some of the times. Yeah, <laughs> we got one time specifically, <laughs> but maybe a little bit more. Um, we're going to talk about, um, we're not here to kind of give you a guide on how to play the deck uh, that is comes in the starter deck box as well as we're not going to be recommending a deck from with the, just the cards in the box uh, instead we're going to be going through cycle by cycle just kind of recommending cards that would be good for Jacqueline Fine from each cycle because you might not have a full collection and we're here to help you kind of note cards that could be good with what you do have um, in addition we recommend that if you only have one copy of the core set to pl uh, pick up another one or proxy the cards you don't have, you will win more if you have uh, more uh, two of copy of cards that only come with one of and one copy of the core set. And if any of these cards are on the taboo list, or you might be thinking, should I play with the, ta the taboo list? We say no, not yet. Enjoy the cards as printed. Uh, I can't think of any. Are there any purple cards on the taboo list? Delve too deep is the only one I think. Hmm. I think just yeah. that. Um, but let's uh, get in. Um, as, uh, let's start talking about Jacqueline. As I said, she uh, once per round, whenever she would reveal any number of Chaos tokens, she reveals two additional tokens. Uh, cancel two non-red tokens or one auto-fail red token. You gotta do that once per round. She has five... Any investigator your location, not just you. Even better. Uh, yeah. Five brain, which is important for purple. You're gonna be using brain to do the primary uh, amount of the things you're gonna be doing. Three book two fist and two foot and she has 69 health and horror baby pause everyone at home is done laughing let's get the <laughs> arbiter of fates uh, this is a three cost asset it's a talent uh, it lets you use your ability twice a turn which is good because that's kind of what she wants to be doing um then we got her uh dark future which is an omen in end times, which is, uh, I love the end times trait. Uh, you cannot cancel or ignore blue ch chits, skulls, uh, just maybe any of the chits. Any of the symbol chits you can no longer ignore, which makes it so that her ability would not trigger in the sense that if you don't want these bad things to happen when you reveal three tokens, you no longer can do that. Um, at the end of your turn, you reveal five random tokens in the chaos bag. If an elder sign symbol is revealed, discard dark future. So... It'll go away in time, and you also could use your ability to draw seven tokens instead. Uh, you can also tell when Justin doesn't know a card, and like it's not put in his brain because he has to read it out loud for himself and yeah. the people at home. <laughs> Sits there with his lips moving for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I never know about Jacqueline Fine, having played the, with these decks. Uh, I've been teaching my family how to play Arkham. But I noticed that Jacqueline Fine is she's probably my second pick for introducing players to the game or to give to new players. Um, while having her use Brain for most of her skills is like a bonus and a, a negative, positive and a negative, in that like if they move to other colors of investigators, they might struggle a little bit with remembering the books for investigating, punches for fighting, or whatever. But at the start of the game, it is nice for them to be able to focus only on one stat and not have to worry too much about the others while they're learning about the flow of the game. As well as the ability to uh, dig up three chits instead of just one makes the game feel less punishing for them. Yeah. And it'll so. also teach them the importance of beating the Mythos Cup as well because they're interacting with it like exclusively with her ability, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to quickly talk about some of the cards in the deck um, that are in this deck list here that Travis made. There's also an Arkham DB link down below if you wanted to see Travis's write-up for it. Um, and then we're going to start talking cycle to cycle and get this thing going. So let's dive in with Ritual Candles, who it now, I will say, Bryn has made me kind of respect <laughs> Ritual Candles again. Yeah, me too. The card's pretty all right. Because, I mean, uh, like, with her ability, it essentially, like, a sm skulls can be zero or minus one a lot of the time. So, or minus five. Yeah, it could also be a minus five. <laughs> but um, it's being able to, like, choose one of these tokens and then, like, now it's only a minus one is a lot better than dealing, like, with a minus two or a minus three where you could fail. 
Yeah, it pretty much just like decreases the negative value of any of the icon tokens by one. Mm -hmm. That's like effectively what this card does. Uh, what does Scryamir do, Travis? Because I don't want to read it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Skyamir, it's got four secrets, and after a skill test, someone in your skill test, oh. someone at your location does a skill test, you can exhaust it and spend one of the secrets, and then they reveal the shit before they commit cards. So it's it's kind of like a premonition, but not. Yeah. Man, I think kind of like kind of like four premonitions, but. Oh. But like the, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's uh, yeah. But only for like when the test is about to happen. I mean, that seems yeah. that seems good. It seems fine. Yeah. Being able to say no, like the way the game plays against you, is obviously the mythos phase, the enemy phase. But then also every time you make a test, the game is trying to tell you no. And anytime you can say turn one of their no's into a yes, like that's great, and this helps you do that. It is worth noting. Uh, I'm like 95% of this, uh, going back to Ritual Candles, that even if you ignore the tokens, they're still considered revealed for the Ritual Candles. Oh my god. It can, if someone watching knows better, like can like, not knows better, but knows the answer like right now, let us know in the comments. I'm that, pretty sure that's how that works. I that could be wrong. right though, because you're not... Uh, other real tokens choose and cancel two of them. So they're still revealed, but they're not canceled. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right, Travis. Yeah. Barring, like, someone coming in and be like, well, actually, technically, when they're canceled, they're not even... It's like, how did you... How dare you? But I think that's that's sweet with Ritual Candles, TBH. It's in her deck, too, so it probably does work that way. Um, Azure Flame and Clairvoyance. Uh, these are kind of like a... They're kind of like a like a Shriveling and a Rite of Seeking, but not. Uh, where they also, they, they will attack and get clues is what I'm saying, not that they have the exact same text on them. But they're also the spells that care about the good tokens being revealed, which is an interesting twist. Uh, Travis, have you played with these and how do they compare to something like Shriveling? Um, Clairvoyance is, like, so much better than Rave Seeking. Yeah. Azure Flame is fairly interchangeable. Cool. Um, generally because Zerflame's like pretty it's pretty interchangeable because like the benefit is that you're less likely probably to draw the chit that hurts you mm -hmm. but it deals heart damage which mystics typically have less of than brains where traveling you're more likely to draw the bad the chit that hurts you but it does horror so mystics do have a lot of ways to deal with horror yeah and then the other one ineffable truth which is going to be on the next slide is Miss is very good, yeah. but I would say it's like strictly better than mists. It's it's just different. Like dealing damage off the chit thing, especially with how likely you are to get, it, is really really nice. But being able to move with mists is also like really good. Yeah. It depends on your team comp and what you're trying to do and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Crystal Pendulum, uh, I remember I was pretty down on this card when we did our reviews for it. It does give you plus one brain, which is nice. Um, but I wasn't too confident about its reaction ability triggering. Travis, have you seen it do better, or were we kind of... Crystal Pendulum? Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. Um, when you're playing these kind of manipulation decks, I think it is probably better than Holy Rosary. Mm -hmm. That's fair, but yeah. It, it's close-ish. And that's like, that's the slot it is. Like, if you're playing a Mystic, you should be playing Holy Rosary, just for the plus one brain boost, and this does the same thing. Um, I wouldn't play if you have no Chaos Bag manipula Manipulation. But with something like Jacqueline baked in, it's probably pretty good with her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robin the Endless Knights gives you a bit more meat and allows you to draw cards when you play spells, which you're going to be doing anyway, which seems like a good deal. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Astral Travel, which, uh, Bryn, why don't you talk about this one? You, you like Astral Travel. Yeah, Astral Travel's pretty sweet. Uh, for three money, you get to move to any revealed location in play. It can, it can save you a whole lot of actions. Uh, there are a lot of scenarios that are like, go do this thing now, go back to the beginning. And you can just be like, I was always at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the downside to it is not actually that steep. Like, there's a lot of a lot of assets you can just discard without feeling too bad about it. Particularly in purple, there's like a lot of them that have doom sit on them. Yeah. And 
if you have to kill them with astral travel, like no big deal. And you don't, it's not even, uh, it's not even a certainty. So then it's also of note, like with the ritual candles, even if the things, when they're revealed, um, they still trigger it, that would still also work for the negative effects on these spell cards that we just talked about as well. Even if you do cancel and ignore them. Travis, why don't you take these guys? Dark Prophecy is uh, a little bit tricky, uh, especially for newer players to use, but once they get it, it's a nice, like, sort of click moment for them. I've seen the value of, like, your cards working together. Um, for example, I had someone use, I saw one of my family members use this in conjunction with uh, the upgraded, I think it's called Haunting Gaze or something like that, cancels an attack, and then if you reveal one of the chits, it deals their damage back to them. Nice. Uh, it's, it's just not it's a nice way to guarantee those those swingy effects that purple gets yeah, or yeah. to dodge depending on like what you're doing it can also be used as like this card actually has a lot of applications it can also be used as like a uh, as a way to guarantee skill tests resolving or make it much more likely for example, if you're in a scenario where the skull is just a negative zero, then who cares if you have to pick that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or if you have ritual candles in play that help soften the effects of any of those tokens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, or if you're playing with defiance, which is also on this. Which you are. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Voice of Raw seems sweet. Like yeah, it's just a solid economy card. You want to hit at least one. Like if you don't hit one, you're like, well, <laughs> no. You're like on Jack on Fine, you should. It's emergency yeah. cash basically with like other upside on other investigators. I think it's a little bit sketchier. I, I I agree with that. I think this is like a just a Jacqueline card. You're not putting this in every one of your Mystic decks. It's pretty sick if you're playing all of all of the <clears throat> right though. Oh, and I like it depends. Uh, it depends on the campaign you're playing as well, like what the probabilities of payouts are on those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Defiance, it lets you ignore one of the symbols, uh, which is, as we said, very relevant when you are able to just grab um, uh, tokens, like multiple tokens from the, the cup. Like, that's, that's good. Uh, I don't know Prezient, so one of you guys want to talk about it while I read Prezient. Hmm. Um, I'll talk about it in the second because I actually know what it does. Uh, but actually looking at the rulings now that I have time to, I think that you might not get the ritual candles if you just reveal one. Because at the end of resolving multiple revealed chaos tokens, add in the FAQ section, card ability interpretation point two point five. it says, note that this entry only applies when multiple chaos tokens are resolved. If multiple chaos tokens are revealed and all but one of them are cancelled or ignored, this entry does not apply. Okay. Interesting. So but anyway, impressions. This is actually a really sweet card, um, especially with Jacqueline, where you can abuse the chaos. I mean, that's a very common thing. Is a lot of these <laughs> cards are going to be kind of up to fate, unless they get a lot worse if you're not playing some kind of chaos bag manipulation, whether it's premonition or Jacqueline Fine or Olive McBride, something like that. Um. Plus one brain, and then just getting a spell back from your discard is pretty sweet. Especially if it's like a, a high value spell, like Astral Travel. Or oh, you're getting back your, your, your Zero Flame you spent five experience on. Feels good. Mm -hmm. uh, here's some of the core set cards that Travis has made and included in the deck. Um, Shriveling is just more damage. Uh, it's a third Zero Flame. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Arcane Initiate, uh, she's going to place Doom on, this, on it when she enters, which is not a problem because, as Bryn said, sometimes, like, you have your something get eaten by your Astral Travel, or, alternatively, you just take damage and you need to kill something, Arcane Initiate can go there. She this is actually the reason that I have two Azur Flames over one Shriveling in this deck, is because Azur Flame does meat damage to you, which makes it easier to kill your Arcane Initiate, mm -hmm. where Shriveling does horror damage. <laughs> At the which end of the day, they're pretty interchangeable, but... Yeah. Uh, but she helps you get more spells, which is good, because spells help you do things as a uh, purple class. Uh, and just also more spells cards. Help you do things. More uh, cards is good. Uh, Ward of Protection. This is kind of like the lucky 
Where you couldn't have just given us another uh, two copies of Warder Protection? No? Okay. Um, Warder Protection... Yeah, but it's a good thing I got two extra copies of Oops, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> we, we, those Oops, they're drying up, Travis. <laughs> um, but Warder Protection lets you say no to the Mythos deck, which is huge. Like, that's just... Yeah, this is like in contention for the best purple card. You should play it. Yes. You, yeah. If you're not playing it, like... I want you to comment on this video and write me like a paragraph on why you're not. <laughs> you're purple deck. It's yeah, it's very, very good. And I, I honestly Unless the reason is you only have two and someone else is playing them, that's fine. Yeah. I'm upset that there weren't were two copies of it in this. It's kinda come on. I'm, I'm not super upset because most of the time I play War of Protection, I play level two anyway, so mm-hmm. uh, who wants to talk about guts today? Should it be me? I already did it. Yeah, Brian, why don't you talk about Guts? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> All right, so Guts is one of the best level zero colorless cards in the game because most of the time when the game attacks you, it does so by making you test your brain score. You can use Guts to make your brain score better, making it easier to pass the test and not suffer whatever horrible fate the game had in store for you. Guts also replaces itself on success, so it comes at almost no cost. Uh, playing a purple character, it has additional upside where you can use it offensively as well because you have so many cards that allow you to test your brain instead of testing the appropriate skill, for example, in combat or investigating. Mm-hmm. Oh, baby, Bryn's got the Word document ready to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it's just up here. It's just, yeah. <laughs> nah, Guts is good. All right, let's start talking cycle to cycle, starting with the core set. So we have Holy Rosary, which, uh, as Travis said, uh, competes with the Crystal Pendulum. Um, But if you're worried about your brain, it's a good alternative if you don't want to be, you know, going through and taking advantage of the Mythos deck. Like, uh, yeah, maybe it's all purple campaign and you've somehow stumbled into, like, three or four brain trauma. Yes, yeah. I mean, Uh, like, three or four brain trauma is actually, like, one or two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. like, maybe you're starting with, like, five brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, Drawn to the Flame uh, is a great card because it allows you to discover two clues to your location, all at the low, low cost of drawing the top card of the encounter deck, which, when you're purple, is very minor. Because, as Bryn was just saying with Guts, brain is the most common test there, and your brain is five. And then it's it, comparatively minor. I wouldn't say it's very minor. It's still a cost. But yeah. 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 Sometimes you sometimes you find a monster and you don't have a combat spell and you're like, someone help me, and then you realize you're on the wrong end of the world for that. So sometimes it's grasping hands. Problem. You're like, Ey. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I have no fear, but I think it's minor. But they, like, you should listen to them. They are right. Yeah. But like, just uh, I'll do it every time without even blinking. Oh yeah. Like, no, like I, I'm I'm never I'm I'm not saying I would ever not just throw this card out to get two clues off of anything even close to resembling a difficult location. Yeah, but it's just it's not as free as you're making it out to be. Yeah. You're being a little disingenuous on this one. No oh, man. They're just like our bad crazy. things that can happen as a result. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Grotesque Statue, I love this card. Uh, it's basically Good. just more of her uh, Mythos Cup manipulation, which if you're looking for having more of it, this card is uh, is great for that. How come this statue takes up only one hand slot? I know, the person is holding it with like, two. Clear, it's, uh, clearly, clearly. There's a bit of a disconnect there. Yeah, you I don't, think I don't you get could that. not hold that with one hand? Well, the picture has two hands, Travis. <laughs> yes, but it's it's... On that's that note, why scale, does Holy Rosary not take up a hand slot? In the art, it's on her hand. Why doesn't it take up two hand slots and your necklace slot? Well, why because he's not wearing, wearing it around her neck, neck, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is because like a rosary makes for a be- it makes for a better way to convey that it's holy when she's praying with it wrapped around her hands. As you opposed mean, to just wearing no, it. I, you mean it's not just the fact that they had this art saved in their art file and they're like <laughs> No, that's the reason a grotesque statue has two hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, <coughs> uh, Book of Shadows, it gives you another spell slot and it allows you to also add charges to spell assets you control, so your shriveling azure flames, clairvoyance, don't run out. Yep, it is worth noting that uh, having an extra spell slot is particularly nice for Jacqueline Fine as she has three spells that she wants to have in play. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you'll notice from the deck that I have cut the cat ally that gives you an extra spell slot. Uh, I think that Arcane Initiate is more valuable in general 
because it allows you to find the spells that you need to do things. But if you're playing with someone like Harvey Walters, who can help you find those spells without you committing cards to it, the cat is a very solid option there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can also use the cat as a cheap way to kill your arcane initiate. Yep. Uh, Right of Seeking, it's a spell. We're in Dumbwich Legacy, by the way. I should start there. Um, (laughs) It's a spell that helps you get clues. It does have a very big downside where you can lose your turn. Like, that's pretty bad. Yeah, um, shit. Pardon? Set the level zero one shit. Yeah, the level zero one's not great. Um, the level four one, though, like getting three clues for one action and is, is, is very strong. However, once again, you can lose your whole turn. So you don't want to do just right of seeking first unless you need it, right? Like, a, a thing about purple characters... Um, is I find anyway, you're not really like, you're not really like in the same pacing of a turn that like blue, yellow are, right? Even like, if you're kind of like, you have time to do things because you can kind of, you you're, you have a lot of setup and you can kind of can do everything, right? But it's like you have to take the time to get there so with your right of seeking turns you don't want to just fire it off immediately you want to do some other things get resources draw cards play cards that you need and then end your turn with right of seeking because then you don't care about the fail text on it and you can use Jacqueline finds ability and just like really dig for it to make sure you get those three clues because three yeah. clues is like a turn of getting clues for a non card committing or rex murphy yellow character for example i think that low level clairvoyance is better like it's not a question really but i do think that level four right of seeking is better than level five clairvoyance yeah yeah uh delta so you can say that is a sick card uh it's very fun it seems scary but it's not um there is... i mean it can be <laughs> i mean, gotta I will be responsibly say... use it this one, like, if you're, if like, if you've played this game a lot, you can know to be like, have your other investigators resign, and then it's just you left, and you draw, and then everyone gets there, um, because when you draw, and I'm gonna say this again as a purple, you don't really care that much. It's very minor. I know they're gonna say again, it's not. It could be scary, but like, no, I agree with you on this one. Kay. This is the card where you look at your teammates sitting in the main hall, and they're fighting down two rat, a rat, and like some rat man. And you look at your hand, and you have two warder protections, uh, deny existence, and two delve two deeps, and you're like, yeah. It's time. Yeah. I get um, two more experience. I will say, though, it, it actually is kind of more worth it as well, because the victory is longer reaching than those two clues are, more likely, right? Like, you get the benefit of that for future. Like, delve to deep is a card you play for a minor problem right now for continual gain in the future however with delta deep as well you're going to want to side this out of your deck pretty early in the campaign like maybe like after scenario so three you're going to want it's delta an investment deep. like yeah scenario three to four depending which campaign you're playing but like it's really easy when deck building to just put delve two deeps in and be like this is going to be my seal of the elder sign and it's going to help me get there right like yeah yeah this is going to be this card, and it's going to make that card cost you less experience. Uh, Fearless is guts, but it also heals you horror, which is good because you will be taking horror by casting a good chunk of your spells here. And also your water protections. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's a priority upgrade, though. I will say that as well. I think this is just no, this something... One, this one's a good filler card. Yeah, yeah. Shrivelings! Oh my god, I forgot I did These that. These are like a zero flame, but they do... They care about the other tokens, and they do horror instead of meat damage. Yeah. That's it. It's the only difference. Yeah. It's really... I think at this point, it's really like personal preference what you play. <laughs> but... Jewel of Taco is actually like really, really good in Jacqueline 5. I believe I it. I would play this over the brain boost. For sure. You get so much out of it. Yeah. And it's like, very easy. You're, you're going to trigger this around. every turn. <clears throat> uh, we also got... I don't think there's much more to say about that card. It's just... It, it's going to it's gonna trigger a lot. And drawing cards and gaining resources is good. Especially in purple. It's like drawing thin. Yeah. But it costs the proper amount of experience and resources. Yeah. 
It takes up a slot. <laughs> Uh, then we got Charisma and Relic Hunter. This is a permanent. Uh, if you want to have a, additional accessory slots, uh, Relic Hunter is great for that because we have you as you've seen purple, purple and green are probably the most competitive for uh, the Relic slot. Yep. Uh, and now you don't need to worry about it. You can have your Jewel of Taco as well as the Brain Boost from the Pendulum or the Rosary. Yeah. Yeah, you can't, I can't have remember the Jewel of Tacos though because there's only one. Yes. Yeah. I can't remember if this guide or the green one was the last one that I wrote, but like if you read the sentences about charisma and relic hunter, you can tell when I got tired of writing about them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I yeah. Um and then if you want more allies, take charisma. Um, but there's it's not as competitive as the other ones are, I think, in purple. At least with this one. That's my opinion, but you might see differently no, no, when you're... With all your purple home. allies, you have no problem just, like, shoving into the abyss for a different guy. Exactly, yeah. They're very expendable. You don't want to be a purple ally. Time is limited. If yeah. you're a sociopath, purple might be the color for you. <laughs> yeah. Purple allies also do tend to be a little more specialized. Speaking <laughs> of allies, you don't mind eating into the abyss. <laughs> Travis, why don't you take these ones? Uh, this is David Renfield. As long as he's got one more Doom on him, you get plus one Brain. Brain is good. That's what you use for everything. And you can exhaust him to put a Doom on him. You may put a Doom on him. Important. And then you gain one resource for each Doom on him. And he takes two heart damage and one brain damage. Which is probably the most important part of him, is how easily you can kill him. <laughs> yeah. This guy is an insane resource. Like, this guy will provide you, the in the four turns he's in play or whatever, he will provide you with the resources you need for the entire scenario. Yeah. But you need to have a plan to get rid yeah, of Yeah, if, if you've watched us play any of our campaigns, probably any of them, you've probably seen a scenario where somebody's shouting about spin, David, spin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's real good. Yeah, this is this is the guy. The man, the legend. Uh, next up, we have Uncage the Soul. I would play this card in pretty well every purple deck over Emergency Cash. Assume I had it. Uh, it's, you play a spell or ritual card from your hand, reducing its cost by three, so effectively gains you three resources. Um, but also you get to play the card, so it kind of gains you an action as well yeah. over Emergency Cash. And then when you don't need to play things, it's Guts. Yeah. Which, as yeah. mentioned before, and in literally, probably literally every video we've recorded is good. Almost. Yeah, not in yeah. Winnie. Yeah. Since we started doing the Investigator. Yeah, like, not, series, not like, Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Storm of Spirits. This one lets <clears> you <throat> basically attack every enemy at your location <laughs> with your Brain Stagger Punch, and if you succeed, you get to do two damage to them. This one's a little bit campaign dependent, but when it's good, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of great. sort of like magic dynamite. Yeah, it's great in Dream Years for clearing out the swarm enemies, uh, and it's pretty solid in um, Circle and Dun's God Camp. A couple of scenarios that I can think of off the top of my head where it it, it works nicely. Uh, yeah, no, it's like. It's a little bit niche, but when you're happy to have it, when it's good, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Then we have level 3 Arcane Initiate. This one, you can either put 1 Doom or 2 Horror on it. This is the Arcane Initiate that you buy. If you want to run more of a spell-focused toolbox deck, and you want to use it for more than like a turn or two. Mm -hmm. Like level 1 Arcane Initiate is really good for finding your first Shriveling, your first Reserve Flame, your first Clairvoyance, what you need now. And then you get rid of them. This arcane shit is really good for providing consistent value over a longer period of time. Um, it's not that much better than the original arcane shit, uh, but I would consider upgrading to this one again if you're running, especially if you're running lots of events. I think this one's better. And also if you have more, if you're hurting on brain trauma. This one's a solider option as well because you can kind of plan around to plan on a turn that Doom's going to take over anyway and just suck off the Doom and boom, you've got two extra brain soak. Yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> Travis, did you want to talk about these cards too? <laughs> I want to talk about two of them. Go for it. I, I think I know which one. All right, Travis, tell me about Recharge. 
<laughs> uh, War of Protection level 2 might be my most upgraded card ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I play a fair amount of purple characters comparatively to these two. And being able to stop a treacherous, being able to stop an ancient ephos at any location <laughs> compared to just your location is so much better and it's so worth the four experience man chat is our, our youtube commenters are loving our purple playthrough how we have not stopped a single single ancient <laughs> evil <laughs> yeah it's a little bit tough <laughs> Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, no, it, yeah. it's really good. I think it's the best multiplayer upgrade oh, yeah. in the game. I think that Easy. if you're playing purple and you don't have level two war protection in your deck, you're trolling your teammates. <laughs> like you're you're actively doing your team a disservice by not playing it. Yeah, like it doesn't it doesn't really matter what they're doing. Like war protection level two makes it makes it better. Uh, Spirit of Thame. It is uh, a neat little trick to make you do your spells better and also stab stab if you need to to kill something small like a rat or Mm -hmm. um because without like some of the later without like specifically some of the bad later spells like wither uh you're not purple isn't good at killing small things which we learned we learned that very quickly when we were surrounded by rats um i don't think they know about that yet oh they will by the time yeah when this one's out that will be that will be fine um but it's it's like something like this is good if you want to be if you know you're going to fight a bunch of small things or if you want to just make your spells better otherwise it's like a lower priority but it is still like it has good numbers on the card yeah it's it's really strong if you're using a lot of the events that are like one shot effects such as storm of spirits yeah where you don't really want to upgrade all of them because it'll cost infinite experience but this one Often what the upgrade does is it just makes it makes the spell have plus two brain on it. Yeah. Uh, recharge is <clears throat> good with Jacqueline. Not good. Good enough with Jacqueline. with Jacqueline. Pardon? It's playable. Yeah, it's playable. That's that's the word I'm looking for. Um, if you want to recharge your spells, uh, like if you really want to go in on your spells to maybe kill a few rats, uh, recharge is a way you could go with it. I think she comes with a level four recharge as well. Level three, level four, something like that. I'll go digging. You talk about Seal the Elder Sign. This is like a strong container for my favorite card in the game. Uh, it costs five experience, which is a lot, but it's a spell, which is very synergistic for all the cards in purple. And then you just get to do the thing. Anyone gets to do the thing that they were trying to do, probably. You just get, to, you just get to draw the star. And like that's so it's so good <laughs> like you don't have to reveal any other chits you're the player just gets to they just get to do what they did and they get the unique bonus that presumably benefits the character which is admittedly a stronger on some characters and others like it's pretty trash on jacqueline fine but when you let patrice shuffle her graveyard back or her discard back into her deck or you let uh like Joe Diamond picking inside out of his discard back and a high level insight back into back into his hunch deck, or like even just Zoe. Or let Jim like, have I'm a fight the bad guy and you're like, Yeah, you do it and also do another damage. Yeah, man. I one one day Travis is going to commit this to something I'm trying to do, and I'll be playing Rex and I will choose to fail and draw three cards, and he will be so upset. I will be incredibly salty if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Seal of the Elder Sign is it's it's fantastic, it's fun, it's powerful, it feels good. Play if it. you're ever playing Rex, there will always be <clears throat> or like Stella, there will always be that like level of doubt in my mind where I'm just like, I c I can't commit this to his test. You, You'll be like, I really need to commit this test or else bad things are gonna happen. I'll be like Spin the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, Travis, <laughs> you can trust me though, but not Bryn. But you could trust me. But I mean, like, it's also like with Jim, that you doing that for me and then I just turn it into a skull. Let's do it. <laughs> Things to the skull, like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arcane Research. experience for you to draw a skull. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know. Uh, Arcane Research. Uh, I highly recommend picking this up if you're a purple character. Um, I didn't in my gym deck because I wasn't going, the only upgrades I wanted were 
uh, water protection, right? I wasn't upgrading other spells. Uh, with every other proper purple deck, you're going to want Arcane Research in there. So, Yeah, it's not an auto-include. But, but like, but there's a good case for have it. A, yeah, you need to have a good reason not to, but there's more good reasons not to play this than there are to not play to not existence or word protection. Yeah. Like, perhaps you're playing Dream Eaters, <clears throat> you only get four scenarios. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's it's kind of lower impact there. Yeah, that's like a real reason not to play it. Uh, Missarella is, uh, if you want to evade and move, like, if that's what you're looking to do in your game plan, that'll help you do it. I don't think there's much more to say. Nope. Uh, Olive McBride is where things get spicy. <laughs> I hope you know the rules. Are there rules? Oh, like, maybe. <laughs> I thought we just made this game up as we went. You have three tokens instead of one. You choose one of them to resolve. Choose two of them to resolve and ignore the other. So then you can reveal five tokens, and you can cancel two non-fail or one fail and then you choose two of the three to resolve <laughs> so it yeah, it's, not, like, it's okay. not like rules heavy but like you gotta think a little yeah, bit yeah what i just described i basically just read olive's ability but <laughs> and then read jacqueline's after <laughs> but there is more to it so you basically olive and jacqueline when they work together you get five tokens Two of them you essentially did not draw, or one of them you did not draw if you're canceling the auto fail. But you shouldn't cancel the auto fail because all it can just do that. Yes. Uh, so you're gonna yep. have then three of the five left, and you're gonna choose two of those. That's like, that's good. Like that's. But Justin, what if I also play a dark prophecy? Okay. Right. <laughs> so then you reveal ten tokens. Travis is just trying to reveal the entire chaos bag for a test. <laughs> Okay, so you reveal ten tokens. tokens. You pick one. <laughs> yeah, you reveal ten tokens, and you choose two of the tokens to resolve, but one of them has to be a symbol token. It depends on what you're using. Jacqueline find all of McBride on. I think a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to. I have an aneurysm thinking about that, but. Uh, I love all of McBride. All of McBride. Uh, she hasn't given me a skull yet as Jim, so I'm a bit salty about that. But we're only three episodes in, so <laughs> she'll she'll pay dividends eventually. <laughs> I think she's great, though. I think she's a very fun and strong ally. Premonition! Bryn, why don't you talk about Premonition? Oh. Because we yeah, use it so... on you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Premonition is a zero-cost event that you can play during any player's action window to draw a token from the bag, and then that token is the token that will be drawn for the next skill test that you attempt. Uh, so it's a great way to like clear a path for a big combo play, or even just make sure that something that's important is going to happen. Like okay. maybe you need to evade a monster this turn, and you can be like, oh, okay, so like we're going to draw a minus three. I just have to be able to beat that. Yeah. Or alternatively, just being like at the start of... A, you see it happen in our group a lot at the start of the player phase. We just bring off the premonition and be like, okay, who can use this? Like, Or like, Bryn can't use this. Who can, Who wants to just throw a test away, right? Yeah, or who can actually like do something with it. Yeah. Something else to know about this card is a lot of time we talk about if your character that you're playing is featured in the art of a card, you should play it. Jacqueline's in the art of this twice. <laughs> <laughs> God, she's just getting fucking wrecked. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, she's also in Recall the Future. She is. Uh, I love Recall the Future as much as I hate it. I think the card's phenomenal, but I always forget to say a symbol. Like, it's... Well, I you just, just put like, always... a standing one, you're like, it's skull until I say otherwise. Yeah, that's, that's usually the shortcut we use at our table. Uh, and I suggest you do something similar for yours because it's a nightmare to remember otherwise. Oh man, yeah, yeah. just just pick the red one. Yeah, like fail, I'll get plus two and then fail. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, we call the future's great, and I think it's going to be even better with Jacqueline. Uh, Defiance upgraded. You basically ignore all of the symbols apart from the auto fail. So if you want that, it's very good for that. Yeah, it's yeah. actually it's like actually good. 
Yeah. Yeah. You don't. You don't have to pick ahead of time. Yes. Yeah. Travis, why don't you take these guys? Okay. Sign magic. We were talking about, or I was talking about how extra hands, extra arcane slots are good. This trades one of your hand slots for an arcane slot, which is like probably better than scrying mirror. But yeah, uh, yeah. low price get three money, but there isn't too much to say about that one. Uh, Eldritch Inspiration is pretty sick though. Uh, the deck does come with an upgraded version of this, but. Um, the level zero one is still very good when you're depending on what cards you're playing, of course. Like, it's it, it's really good when you're playing like Astral Traveler or whatever, because they're like throw away a thing yeah. and you're like nah. You throw away a thing and you're like I'll do it twice. Yeah, it's or it's like really good if you're playing with it's not pictured right now, but we'll get to it. Level four six cents and you're just like old oh, birdie. Yeah. Uh, level zero six cents <clears throat> is it's like. So, up until this cycle, all of the Mystic cards had limited uses, as defined by the number of charges they had. Uh, these two cycles, um, or the cycle, introduced, quote-unquote, worse versions <laughs> of these cards. Like, one of them's worse. <laughs> they do the thing, but you can do it any number of times. Six Sense is, like, really good. Um... I would, especially with uh, Arcane Research and that full card pool, I would strongly consider playing Six Cents over Clairvoyance yep. and just upgrading straight to Six Cents level 4 because it's boring, but it's so good. Especially yeah. with uh, with Jackal, where you can hit it like probably 66% of the time. I have no math to back that up. I'm just guessing. <laughs> uh, but like two clues a turn for or for per activation, sixty six percent of the time. That's pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lowest everyone like you just you just use your brain to investigate your book is basically all this. And I mean like at the same time that's not like bad because as purple you're probably just gonna be like filling in the gap right. So like... yeah no like you're you're paying three money to. Uh, investigate five instead of three. Yeah, like all the time. Yeah. Uh, the downside isn't even a downside; it's actually strip a benefit for some reason. Yeah. Uh, next one's wither, which is not good, but it definitely has its niche, and it's very good in that niche of gunning down weaker enemies. Yeah. Uh, rats is very good at killing. Um. You know, cultists and stuff, it's very good at killing. Just anything that's got like one or two health and you don't want to actually spend a reserve flame or shriveling charge on. Yeah, yeah. It's also like kind of neat in that, like, if you work really hard, you can set up some kind of cool combos with shotguns and like I, quick thinking. Honestly, I think like a support psychic Jacqueline Fine. Who just hangs out with the guard? Like, like she can just like poke an ant, like a boss a few times with withering. Purpose. This only gets into the remainder of the turn, though, not the round. So it's only your turn. Oh, that's why I said you have to. You have my to, mistake. My mistake. You have to work around. It. Like, if you're playing big gun Leo, it could be really cool because he can play quick thinking <laughs> or uh, that other one that lets you just take an action whenever. Because mm -hmm. that's still during your turn, and you're like, check it out. It's only got one fight this turn. He like loads up his shotgun. Dude, I don't know why. I always thought it was around. Dang. I feel like I just walked into like a Berenstein Bear situation. But no, that's that's still fair, Travis, what you're saying. I think that's that's right. Yeah, like it's more niche, but it's the, the concept's still there. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Only two cards changed. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so deny existence. Uh, you get to say no to the game, which uh, I think is one of the strongest things you can do apart from spin Mr. Rook. Um, but just being able to say no to many things. And also, um, it is, as someone commented, that it can also use to stop a haunted thing from triggering, from affecting you, because a location is an encounter card. Uh, the level f uh, deny existence is something you want in your purple decks. The level five version, you get to say no while also saying your own personal yes, which feels so 
good. It's so strong. Then we got upgraded six cents, with this, which is absolutely insane. Like it's crazy good, because uh, now you get to. Um, sorry, one second. I just want to make sure because as I I've walked into this new universe where wither doesn't work like I've always assumed it did. <laughs> so you basically just get to investigate at your location and a location connected if you reveal uh, up to two connections away um, if you reveal one of those symbols, which with Jacqueline is very easy to do. Very easy. Uh, the upgraded Wither, uh, you get a bit more brain. In addition, it also reduces their health, so it's like you're dealing plus one damage with it. It's like... Only if you kill them that turn. Yes. Yeah, only if you kill them that turn. So it's like... It's good against two health enemies now, right? Like, but it's still not like Shriveling and, and um, Azure Flame are just like better. But if you're looking to kill small things and you're not looking to kill the big stuff, Wither can help you with that. But yeah. Yeah, like the level four Wither actually is pretty good even against boss monsters because. It kind of does. I mean, it's not good against boss monsters. It goes from being good against like low tier monsters, low health monsters, to middling health monsters because it kind of does two damage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is really good for killing like three health monsters. Yeah. Which is most of them. But you know, a dole shows up, you're kind of like, eee. <laughs> that dole is not for me, not my wither spell. Mm -hmm. um, Four of Cups, the tarot cards, uh, they're. Uh, Plus one cups. brain. This one brain, yeah. Yeah, it's not too flashy, but it'll do a lot of work for you. All right. We're finally here on the last cycle of this video. The Dream Eaters. Who wants to talk about this? Does anyone have any one of the cards they want to talk about? Friend likes this card. Scroll of Prophecy is sick. Uh, for an action, you get to spend a charge, and it doesn't even exhaust itself. You just draw three cards and then discard a card. But any investigator at your location can do it. Uh, so it's really solid for... Uh, if you're playing like a the more toolboxy style deck, or even just, uh, you know, like maybe you don't have the right spells in hand to do what you need to do right now, take a look and see if we can find one that's better. <laughs> or at least like, like better suited to what we're trying to do right, right now. Yeah. This is a card that's actually come up quite a bit recently that we like all agree is pretty good, but no one's played it. I played it in the uh, Safina deck as a tool to try to find double double. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, do. I should have played uh, Tamak to your feet in that deck. <laughs> oh no, I was playing Zoe. That wasn't my problem. That was a different man. They all play together after a while. They do. They do. Uh, open gate is very scenario dependent on when it's good, but when it's good, it's very good. Like, See. especially in something like the Forgotten Age, you can just drop an open gate down on the beginning of a temple, a certain Etsli temple, and then just walk out later. Um, and it's myriad, so you do get three of them, so you're very, you're likely to see at least two from the... I like this card because of the whole fuck you asylum aspect of it. Yes. yes. Yeah. No, it's very, very good in Carcosa in general. It's pretty solid in Dunway. I think this card's like overall just good, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's like pretty good in Dunway. Scenarios it's really good in Midnight like Masks. When it's good, it's real good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Spectral Razor is like. Again, really good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is a card that I think is like a little bit better in purple splash invest the investigators who can play purple Zerda too, as opposed to the investigators who can play all purple. But nonetheless, it is it's still very good. You get to like for Jacqueline, you get to test at seven, deal two damage. You can gauge it. It does three damage if it's it, not. Me. Yeah. Good card. Good card. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it just just <laughs> sorps the three health enemies like. Card's strong. Yep. Uh, read the signs. Also very, very good. This one is not investigator dependent. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of just always good. 
you yeah. just pay two money and then you get to test it like infinite and you get three clues for it and then you also um get to like sometimes the flavor the text on it is relevant where yeah, you, sometimes the flavor text is relevant <laughs> yeah where you can just ignore the say anything that might trigger while investigating yeah oh you gotta turn it to a ghost <clears throat> Yeah, here you go. Yeah. Um, this one's like the other ones where you add your brain to your foot and it gives you a long-lasting benefit where you the enemy cannot enemies cannot engage or be engaged with you and you cannot attack or deal damage to enemies, enemies because you turn into a ghost. That's cool and fun. Um, I don't think it's necessary for a lot of purples, but if you if you know you want it, like it'll be good for you. If you're playing solo, it's like really strong. Yes, definitely. Uh, Shine Trap with Zahedron has a lot of text on, but basically you can make a brain test instead of paying money for your spells, and the brain test is equal to the amount of money that you would pay. Yeah. Uh, it takes up the necklace slot, which is a little bit tough sometimes, but at the same time, just making a test instead of paying money is really good when all your spells cost a million money. Yeah. This is true. It's a good idea. Also very flavorful. Next up, we got Twilight Catherine Prince. She is one of the allies that you don't want to just shove off a ledge at the first opportunity. She, that level five Zero Flame you pumped all your experience into is here forever. You never run out of charges. Mm -hmm. It's um, just really good. I remember when like when Diana, Olive, and Twyla were, were like spoiled. We were like, oh my god, like. We said, like, good purple allies, but, like, a lot of the allies in purple are very good. We really meant, like, an ally we want to keep yeah. forever. Yeah. yeah, an ally I don't just want to throw out and kill. Yeah, like, it, it's an ally that's for the second half of the game. The first half of the game, you have no problem dropping Arcania shit or Mr. Renfield and, like, abusing them and then dumping their them the on the curb. In the river. You're done. <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like command. Twyla and all of their marriage material, you want them there for the rest of your life. Yes, yeah. Uh, Word of command helps you get spells. Uh, it's been, it's a tutor. That's what it is. Wow, that is. <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't only get spells instead of rituals, which is unfortunately relevant. <laughs> but. Yeah, so like, don't put it in your deck if you're if your rituals are the cards you seek. Yeah. And last but not least, we have the Black Cat, which seems especially good in Jacqueline. It's insane in Jacqueline. Yeah. Like, uh, it just takes damage forever. Uh, the downside of using Azure Flame or Clairvoyance or Shriveling, where you take damage for using them, you just dump it on your cat, and then if, once in a while you pick the blue one, and then he's fine. And then also it makes it so that two of the scariest non-autofail chits in the bag are now nothing. Yeah, right. like the, you, you actually just get to pass the test. Yeah, yeah. If you've got the ritual candles in play, they're actually nothing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it seems very strong, and I think it'd be very. The black fun cat to that comes in the star deck when he's napping. This is who he is. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but I, I do want to see the play where someone has the cat from the starter of Jacqueline and then plays black cat, and it's like you know, just I'm you. charisma crazy cat lady. Let's go. Miss Doyle. Anyway, that's Jacqueline. Um, we hope that you guys uh, watching have had some help in kind of various directions that you can take these five starter decks. I say this with the utmost respect to Fantasy Flight, but I hope they do not release one these again for a long time because there is a lot of work that goes into these videos and we are free of them and we can go back to our nice 20 minute discussions about investigators. Yeah, I actually kind of just don't like the huge influx of player cards. <laughs> yeah, I honestly don't think they need more because, like, they got five, they got one of each color, right? Like, just point people to those for the next four years, right? Yeah, I, I would actually kind of rather if they, like, shaved on a player card per scenario pack in the future and just made the scenario itself a little more expensive, but... Dude, I, I'm I'm with you. I agree. I agree 100%. Like, I understand that's worse for players getting into the game, but having everything, like, it's actually starting to get a little bit overwhelming. And also, like, it's, like, to be real, the there is kind of, 
in these later cycles, some player card power creep, which I know you can say when a, in a cooperative game isn't as big of a deal, right? Because you can choose to not play with them. But like, why would I not? I mean, I've been playing with Pete Sylvester for years, right? Because he's a very good red. <laughs> and like, same with Travis now with Mr. Rook, right? Like he's hard pressed to not play Mr. Rook in yellow, right? Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to him getting nerfed. I hope it's not just experience wise. Because then this just attacks. Yeah, because Travis is like, oh, frick, my first four experiences sold. My deck doesn't get to function until after the first scenario. Eh. Yeah. But uh, thanks for watching. We're going to be back to the rest of the investigators we need. Uh, we had some people asking when we're going to get to the Innsmouth Conspiracy investigators. We're going to get to them once the entire cycle has been released. And then we know all the cards that are in their cycle. Because it would be very bad for us to recommend a deck with just the core set and that cycle. Which you might be <laughs> in the position that you might be in that. And it, it is hard. We remember when we were building decks with just core set and Dunwich Legacy Deluxe. It gets easier once there's more, and that's what we're going to save those videos for. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.